What's up gamers? Welcome to the channel. I'm going to be showing you the best places to hunt grass type Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. And oh boy, we got a bunch of shinies in this video. You can get shinies like this and this one and also this one and that and tons more probably the world record of shiny pokemon so stick around and check out all the shinies we got okay so for these sandwiches that i'm making for the grass i'm slapping on a piece of lettuce i'm slapping on one salty herba mystica and any other salty herba mystica to go with it so i'm putting a salty and a sour and i'm slapping it together there are other sandwich options but this is the one i'm using just because i want to use this one Wow, look at that sandwich. Spicy. Okay, and that's going to give you sparkling power grass, tidal power grass, and encounter power grass. This is probably the best spot to find a Tropius. It is going to be pretty much if you come from West Province Area 2 and cross over into the Lake Casaroya area, it's going to be this part of the land. Look how insane these spawns are. I'm going to, I'm going to just walk here, okay? <laughs> look what's spawning already. These guys, look, there's just so many. And as you walk anywhere around this area, this is pretty much the way I like to go. And the shine is going to be very, very lighter green compared to the original. So you'll be able to spot the shiny with no problem when you're comparing it to this many. And, and don't let the moonlight also trick you when you're hunting this at nighttime because yeah, it's very obvious. Anyway, you can see the amount of them that spawn in this area. I like to walk up and down to despawn them. Sometimes I go to a little distance of a height and do a jump so I could just glide and spawn in new ones. I don't know. It's really up to you how you want to do it, but you can run the pathway up to that rock. You see the distance over there. That's the rock and run back. That's a great way if you just want to travel and spawn them. Remember, just don't go too fast as usual. I always mention that because I did miss a shiny in our fairy video, which was very embarrassing. So don't go fast and just continually spawn them in, spawn them out. And eventually with the amount of spawns you get for these guys, I'm guaranteeing you're going to get a shiny very quickly. So good luck with your Tropius hunt over here. Okay, so a shiny Tropius just showed up while we were grass hunting. Oh, baby. <laughs> How cool is this? If you enjoy these videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps and lets me know that you want more videos like this for every single type. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I will make more of these. Thank you. Now, since we did talk about Capsa Kid, if you go closer towards the town area, you're going to notice that a bunch of shiny Cacnea spawn. And I'm not, he's not shiny. I said that because I just saw a shiny. Okay, uh, right, right, right on cue. There's a shiny. Thank you for showing up for the video. So like I was saying before, shiny Cacnea just appeared by the town you're going to be getting a better chance at getting the Cacnea to spawn. So pretty much you want to just walk closer towards the town here. Tap the town. It's going to despawn a group of them out to make this a little faster for you. And then get out of Cascarafa, get back into the desert. Just stand there and wait and you'll get different spawns showing up again. Now, like I said, it's only unfortunate part of this is that you're going to get some Capsicids. But overall, the Cacneas will be very obvious and you saw how easy it was to identify that shiny. Okay, so for this part of the Asado Desert, when you zoom out of your map you're going to be heading towards this area over here and when you start going there it's going to be a little bit of a dual hunt between capsicid and you're going to start seeing bramblins they start showing up as you get closer to this watchtower now the way to identify bramblin shiny it's going to be a little difficult as they're moving pretty fast across the desert but you're going to want to look for the tips to be a little more white than usual. So I actually bumped into a shiny right before I started recording this part of the clip, as you can see right here. Its tips are wider and the base of its body is a dark green. So you're gonna have to be paying attention to that when hunting these Bramblins. And the best spot that I noticed where you can hunt them, it's a dual hunt again with Capsicid. This guy takes over the desert, is going to be by the entrance over here before you go to this next area. So pretty much what you wanna do here is just despawn them out, walk away from them, and really hope you don't have a sandstorm like I'm having, despawn whatever you see out and then come back to the same location. Go a little slow just in case. And if you need to use the double home button at any time just to verify what is happening with those bramblins, please, please do that. There you go. You can see if it has the white tips by doing that. If you want a solo hunt area specifically for a capsicid, who's by the way, the shiny is going to be yellow when you notice it, it's going to be right against this wall, specifically very close by this area. As soon as you leave this area and start moving forward or to the right, you're going to start getting different spawns. So if you're hunting for Capsicid, stay within a certain area. Make sure to turn around. Make sure to pay attention to the spawns. You're looking for a yellow Capsicid. That's what you're going to be doing. And they are pretty tiny. So if you want, you can use the double tap home trick. And you can see as we go further out here, I'm getting Cacnea spawning. So Cacneas are going to spawn on this side here. So we're going to stay away from Cacneas. And we have a nasty storm coming in, which is going to ruin our shiny hunt. But that's the problems with the desert. You're going to have to deal with that. But if you stay right by this area, 
you should be fine getting these now what you can do is you can either picnic reset or you could just walk in and out of an area to get them to completely despawn and once you're got the despawn they can respawn back as you walk back in so there's all the despawns i walk back and then they'll all start to spawn back in very slowly there they are so that's where you're gonna hunt capsicum now, if you want a very easy hunt with Bramblin, I suggest you come over to East Province Area 3. As you can see, I just spawned in here. We have the grass sandwich and every single thing you see roaming around is a Bramblin. That simple. <laughs> it's literally like they've taken over every single spot. When you look for the shiny, you're going to want to look for the white tip and you want to look for the green base. And as you can see, all of these don't have that green base or white tip. So it should be very obvious when there's this many walking around. And the simple way to shiny hunt for this is by just zoning out. And look how many disappear as soon as you zone out. And then you zone back in. And as soon as we come back in, you're going to be greeted with a bunch of new spawns. So it should be pretty easy to hunt this Bramblin within this rocky area right Right by east province area three it shouldn't be too bad now if you want to do a simple town reset method where they're going to show in and out you can go to zappa pico east and in zappa pico east as soon as you step off this platform and look straight ahead you just have to light yourself up here and it says east province area three you're going to be greeted by the bramblins starting to spawn in the background there you go one two three four five and a couple of them showing up here it's nighttime so we are getting a couple other ghosts spawning with us but as soon as you pull back in here zappa pico gone again you step back out east province area three the spawn should start again there they are and this is another way you can shiny hunt one two three four five six seven of uh, bramblins at a time and i'm just not doing any effort of going crazy to despawn them so this is also another great alternative if you don't want to just run around and see them and you just want to do easy despawns this would be the spot to go for the bramblin all right so this next hunting spot is going to be for skiddo and it's going to be a little caps of kids in the area with it but mostly you're going to notice your skiddos this is going to be west province area one north and you're going to run this pathway all the way to cascarafa west which is a pretty good one we just spawned in over here and you can see there's a bunch of skiddo already right in front of us and if you want to go backtrack you would also find skiddo but personally i like heading towards the town it's my favorite thing to do so here you go you just walk down this pathway straight don't go too fast let the let the skittles spawn in you can go into the grass on the right you get little family groups over here like that start looking to the left and right you can see the little caps of kids walking by keep going forward and you have alternate pathways i love the fact that families do spawn in here you're gonna have be coming up to a road on the right so make sure you're just looking out make sure you're zoomed out all the way the shinies for these are pretty obvious but you want to turn right if you want to change up your hunt a little cover a little more ground while you're hunting in this area just to get different spawns in this spot and if you don't really like going that route you can kind of just skip that route and head right to the town uh okay there is a shiny skittle right there as we were heading towards town continuing the path because i do need to finish that path with you guys to show you a little something special here there's another alternate path you can take to the right to see those skittles but we're gonna keep going and the fun part is once you get to the town over here and you get the notification that you are in Karafa. you can do this lovely thing where it is leaving the town like that which is basically minimal effort and when you do leave a town you get some pokemon spawns in front of you so you can use that to your advantage to spawn as many as you need disappear until you see a shiny so this is also another fast trick that you can use so i've had a very hard time with patillis in this game spawning by the way where patilli is located in area one i have not had much good luck with patilli so if anyone does have a better spot please feel free to write it in the comments and i will pin this comment i really wanted to know a good spot and i just had no luck with it this is pretty much what i'm doing so i just i will nuke it he spawned everything out and then walk back over there's your there's your chancy spawn again and we came back and there it is so i think there's only one spawn of patilli here for some reason but yeah here's the shiny on screen so you're going to be really looking at the differences in the eyes if you see the shiny pokemon this is my favorite area to hunt hopip and hopip is pretty good so this is going to be to the right of the poco poco lighthouse in this area right over here the closest other location i could say it's to the left of the south province area five so we're pretty much just sitting in south province area one in this spot right over here yeah this is my favorite spot look how how many hopip families you're gonna see over here not even the family just the groups of hopip everywhere it's like the only thing i spot here as you're walking in so just go ahead around this area and what you're gonna be looking for is a green hopip that's how you're gonna know the difference they like to troll you by putting a skip bloom in other areas so they make you think there's a shiny hopip just keep going back and forth zone the pokemon in and out they do have so many spawns here there's another group over here and you can just keep doing this or rotate around this little bit of area spawn in new ones 
push them away. Yeah, just keep despawning them in and out until you're able to find one. Also, pay attention to the ones flying in the air. Sometimes when you're looking at the ground, you might miss those. So, yep, just look for green in this area and you should be easily able to have a shiny puppet. Okay, I have one second on my sandwich. <laughs> And we just got this shiny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so there is a really good shroomish spot all the way in area one. This is pretty much the first, I mean, not area one, but your starting area in your south province. It's going to be by the spiral hill. There's a tree here and you can see that we're exactly where I'm spawned at. There are a bunch of shrooms. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, there's 12 shroomish around me. 13, 13 shroomish around me. And by this tree is pretty much the best spot. I've noticed walking away from this tree is pretty nice. And as soon as I despawn out a bunch of shroomish there, I'll get some in front of me over here. And then as soon as I despawn them out, I like to head back towards that tree spot to spawn in a bunch of new ones. So I'm just going to go to that tree. And when I hit that tree, I'm just going to stand there for a sec and just wait because the shroomish sometimes take a bit of time to spawn in. Yeah, so when you walk away from the tree and you come back and despawn out different Pokemon, you should be seeing a good amount of shroomish. And if there's not, just despawn the Pokemon out and come back to this tree again and see what you get. But there's a lot of good shroomish spots here. And if, again, I mentioned if Deerling and other Hoppips and Skip Blooms show up, just despawn them out and just move right back to the spot. That's what I like to do. So despawn them out like that and then just come back and maybe you get more shroomish again. That's pretty much how I've been hunting this in this specific area. Okay, another great spot to hunt shroomish is going to be from medali and it's going to be moving towards well medali west and moving towards this area this is actually where i got my first shroomish in the game that was shiny this is very exciting to get it so head over to that area a little further away from the town right towards these tree area and slow down and once we get over here you should start to see yeah there you go there's the shroomishes starting to spawn in the medali area and they like to hang around here you're gonna get some tropius it's really hard to get a perfectly solo and oh my gosh and there it is that's exactly where i got my first shiny there it is there's a shiny shiny shroomish right there this is now my second one i don't even have to show the old clip <laughs> we got a shiny shroomish okay so if you don't want to knock down trees looking for bond sweet which is very annoying to find because you have to hit the trees this is a good spot to find its evolution steeny and the location for this is going to be towards the right of artisan right over here and if you look around you can see all the steeny now steeny is going to be really obvious because it's shiny it's going to have a very different color top a little more purplish so what you want to do here is either you could do the picnic reset or you could just despawn these out as you are in the area so just make sure you see a bunch of them despawn a bunch of them and before you turn around and start going for the next ones make sure to pay attention to the ones that are spawning around you in this area uh, you're also going to see some deerlings here and there this is going to be the summer form of deerlings so all you got to really pay attention to is the pink flower on its head so that's just a side project while you're here looking for steenies but steenies is the big objective when you're in this area and you'll see them spawn in as we move back over here towards this tree there's a good group of them sometimes you get a little hop ups here so you'll notice those as well but yeah this is mostly your steeny hunting spot it's a very good spot if you want to hunt steeny alone and not really worry about a bunch of other Pokemon spawning in. So I just like to do the whole despawn thing and walk back. And that's pretty much how you're going to get Steeny and then eventually evolve it into Serena. Oh, and, and that's how we get a shiny. Like I was saying, that is how we get a shiny. It's purple hair. I was just going to end this segment. And then it just happened to be that a shiny wanted to show up. And welcome and thank you for coming to uh, the... Wow. Wow. Thank you. Steeny, you are amazing. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and grab some small olives, this is pretty much a good area. So you can either come in from South Province Area 2 or spawn in from Cortando East. I really like hunting them in these farm areas. The more open, the better. And this is pretty much where they're going to spawn. And what I like to do is just hop from farm to farm. Or you, what you can do is despawn them out completely in an area. And what you're going to be looking for is a black olive on its head. They look pretty much the same. The only difference is going to be that black black olive on its head and if they don't spawn in like i said just move to the next patch that's pretty much how i did it and an interesting way that i 
I mean, I, I went really fast past these small loaves, but something I did during a live stream was that someone bet me $500 that I couldn't find it with 10 minutes left remaining on my sandwich. So what I did was I basically teleported to this area and ran through all the farms, despawning them in, de respawning them back in, pretty much like how I'm doing right now on this. And eventually I was actually able to bump into a shiny small live right on stream with less than 10 minutes left of a sandwich and was able to get it. And that's pretty much the technique I used. They're all over these farm areas. These small lives are everywhere. So you can peek into any farm with the trees, but the best ones that you can possibly get are the spawns where the trees haven't fully grown. I like those better because you have more of a view of all the little small lives on the floor. But pretty much any of these areas is how you're going to be finding small lives. So just run in and out and you should be able to get your nice small lives and eventually evolve it into Arboliva. If you want to get Fungus and its evolution Amoongus, this is a very good spot uh, because you have tons of families and the spot is going to be north province area two it's going to be the bamboo forest and it's a lot easier to see here because they're in the open floor there's not much grass and all you gotta do is just look for a blue pokeball that's it and you just keep zoning in and zoning out walking back and forth eventually you will bump into a group of families and get a blue one i have not been able to find myself a blue amoongus not yet not a blue fungus but hopefully when you do this hunt it should be easy i personally don't need one i already have one from another game but you can grab one over here it's pretty simple you can see all the families just spawn in and if you're not by the families you'll see the solo ones just be on the floor and they're they're pretty obvious so there we go okay this is probably the best best go goat spot and it's going to be right over here in this spot so you see over here is north province area two it's a lookout area right above it and it's just small area but look how insane this is ready look at the amount of go goats right behind me right so you see all these go goats here and then as i go further you're gonna see <laughs> watch this watch this get ready there's another go goat spawn there's another go goat spawn there's another go goat spawn here and i'm gonna you move a little back another go goat spawn and pretty much the loop path what you want to do is despawn the ones out in front of you and then uh, great look another one spawned over there here's another one that spawned here and i kind of just run back to that same spot over again and this one is just ultra powerful go goat hunt central okay so if you make your way all the way to the north province area one watchtower i did talk about this in my fire video when you pop the fire sandwich you'd get scovillain as well as flareons but now i've popped my grass sandwich to come over here to this exact same spot so if you want to hunt scovillains this time they're not going to be spawning in with flareons which is pretty cool so i'm just walking around i'm seeing my bunch of scovillains you're going to be getting a oh my god you're also going to get the deerlings but is that what i think it is pink flowers on hair this wasn't even for these guys this was a dual hunt no way that's a shiny dude yeah that's deerling that one's easy to spot when you know that it's always going to have pink flowers on its head compared to any other deerlings that is the spot where you're going to always look on its head that's how you're going to know and the adult versions are just going to be a much lighter color brown compared to most of them are going to have a darker brown so that's how you're really going to know anyway let me just let me just catch this real quick this was not supposed to be shiny in the video right now this is this was the dual hunt part of the video back to what we were saying so i popped the grass sandwich and you can see already behind me look how many uh, skull villains are there and what you're gonna be looking for is a blue pant shiny on skull villain and this is a pretty good spot now to go around and, and start hunting for it and you can see they spawn a lot easier you're also getting a little mix of go goats they do spawn here as well and go goats are gonna have a little lighter color on its head if you can see in the shiny look at that the scovillains you got families of go goats you saw just here as well you saw the deerling family spawn in as well as sawsbuck so in a way maybe this is a triple hunt but majority of the pokemon that do spawn here are scovillain and if you're going for a scovillain and you're missing a bunch of these other pokemon i do suggest this is a great spot and what i usually like to do is work my way all the way up to the top of this hill again we'll just see all the spawns as we head up towards the spot you can head up to this part of the mountain yeah so pretty much this whole entire area from that mountain top from here you can go all the way down to the north province area one rotate this whole area to see how you can do your hunt when it comes to getting these grass pokemon Okay, so as you head towards the Glaciato Mountains, pretty much from this location, so if you go up from North Province Area 1, make a left up there, or if you're coming from North Province Area 1 Watchtower and heading up to here, as soon as you enter the rocky areas, you're going to notice a lot more go goat spawning because, you know, these goats like to climb mountains. And in real life, you'll also see goats doing these cool mountain climbs. They're 
mountain goats after all, right? Look at all the families that are spawning here. That is a lot of them. So if you want to separate the hunts and make them a little bit more different from just mixing them up in Scovillian spots, this is a very, very good spot to hunt the go goats. And you could just disappear, spawn them in and out. Look how many families keep spawning in these rocky areas. Look, look at, whoa, that's a lot of them. Yeah, so it, you can see that it is pretty easy to get a bunch of these guys. So if you're in the mood to hunt some goats down, I highly suggest you go ahead and do that. Now, for another Pokemon to separate them from everything else, as we go further up the mountain, you're going to start to see different Pokemon, like Sawsbuck and Deerlings just spawn. They're going to be totally separated from the Go-Goats here, and they're going to be on their own. These guys are roaming in families, and you'll see them as you continue to climb the early parts of this mountain. Now, if you want to know exactly where I am on the map, this is the location at the moment, and you can see I'm heading further up, and there they are, over there. And again, here's the shinies on the screen, so you know exactly what you're looking for, but pretty much much this is a very good route in order to hunt a lot of these pokemon here's another family all right so the next pokemon that we're going to be hunting is going to be up here in the glaciato mountains we're just moving up we're just continually moving up this elevation here so on this mountain we're going to be hunting snover and abomna snow and here are the shinies on screen and you're pretty much just going to be looking for this little blue in them as opposed to that now we're going to pick an open area to hunt them because the more open the better the more pokemon you can see and when you have the grass sand Sandwich on. I know a lot of people were asking me, hey, can you make one for ice Pokemon? Because it's really confusing when it comes to ice. This is a very good way to separate these Pokemon from the other ice Pokemon because they are also a grass. And you can see as we walk a little further away from that Pokemon station, we're going to get some of these spawns showing up here. There you go. On a whole other family. There's a, there's a couple more here. And the grass is going to override the top of this snowy mountain with a lot more spawns of Snowvers and Abomina Snow. So that's the cool part about this. And if you want to really just hunt them pretty simply, just do a couple despawns and respawns over here once they get out of your render distance just move back make sure you're paying attention to the colors because you're looking for blue when you're hunting them you can zone in and out from the pokemon station or just decide to go anywhere and do a picnic reset the only annoying part you're gonna have up here is when it starts to snow or blizzard that's when the fps is gonna drop but otherwise it should be a pretty simple hunt to get these guys up here this part is going to be the Socorat Trail. This is going to be north of Casaroya Lake. And in Socorat Trail, the best Pokemon to find is going to be Toad's Cruel and its evolution, Toad's Cruel. And they're the first ones you see here, but they are a grass ground type. Now, because we're using the grass sandwich, we're going to get a combination of a bunch of shiny Pokemon in the area. Not shinies, but hopefully shining, but a bunch of combinations of grass Pokemon. You're also going to get Amoongus and Fungus. You're going to get Omantis. Lorantis. It's just a crazy chaotic grass hunt in this area. And these families will spawn everywhere. You'll also get some random Leafeon showing up. So it's a bunch. It's a bunch. And then you'll get the specific autumn form Deerling and Sawsbuck spawning here. And remember, you just gotta look for the pink flower. So if you want to go do a multi-hunt in this area, I suggest this is the best spot. And Toad Scroll probably is going to be better with a different sandwich because using a grass sandwich, like I mentioned, is just gonna summon everything else in the area. So for Toad Scroll, you're gonna wanna have a ground sandwich, but if you want to do a multi-hunt and get lucky, this is probably the area you want to just run around in circles, hunting all the sorts of Pokemon you find. So that's what you're going to be doing here. Amoongus, Fungus, Toad Scroll, Toad Scroll, Omantis, and Lorantis, and then random Leafeons that do happen to show up in this area. This is just a multi-hunt area if you're interested in running the laps and looking for the Pokemon. Okay, this next location is going to be all the way up in this north area. So you want to teleport over to North Province Area 3. And once you're here, make sure, of course, your grass sandwich and everything is on. You're going to notice there's a lot more flower fields. Of course, Jumpluff and, <laughs> and Hoppips are going to be all over here. But if you pay attention to the flowers, you'll start to notice certain Pokemon spawning in here. So get a little deeper to the flowers. And we're going to start to see something right over there. Our Sunkerns or Sunfloras, the evolution. There we go. Our sun floors are going to be hiding amongst the flowers. And what you're going to be looking for in a shiny one is a much, much more pale or lighter, lighter color when hunting these flowers. You can keep walking through the flowers if you want to see them. There they are. This is a great spot to hunt them. Also, while you're here, you have the option to hunt a Fomantis and Lorantis. As you can see, they are spawning together here as well. Another grass type. So in a way, this can be your dual hunt. Ignore these hopips, skip blooms. They're literally everywhere in the game. And just pay attention to the flowers and look for these other families. So I'm just going to keep going ahead so you guys can see the spawns. And remember, when something doesn't work out for you, just walk away from it 
and come back like this for example look at all these hop hip and skip loops i don't like them so i'm just gonna walk away from them and uh as you go further down yeah i've, I've noticed more sun floors as i go further and further down so when you come to this part on the lower part of the hill you're going to sometimes bump into Petalil and its uh, evolution Lilligant. I've noticed that is probably the hardest spawn out of all the spawns in this area because there are tons of Sunflora and then you see a bunch of Fomantis and Lorantis. But the Petalil and its evolution, it's, it's going to be tough. Despawn and respawn as much as you can in order to get these Pokemon to come in. But good luck with that. But it, this is a spot where it does show up. They do like the flowers. So because the area is very flowery, you want to pay attention to the floor carefully because and <laughs> because if you see, there's a little bit of a yellow here on the area. And if you zoom in, whoa, that looks a little different than those guys over there. That is going to be our shiny. There is your little Fomantis. So it's very important to look around and be careful when you're in this area. And you'll be able to definitely get good shiny grass Pokemon here. Oh, this is exciting. Look at all these Fomantis, Lorantis. This is great. Let me know how successful your hunts are here. And uh, the, all the shinies are on screen for you to take a look at so you don't get any confused. If you go to lab, research lab number one, the first spot in area zero, you'll be able to actually hunt jump pluffs and of course the lovely annoying spawning go goats here but if you want to dual hunt both this is a great spot jump pluffs spawn here like crazy so this is a pretty good pokemon if you do want to hunt the third form without having to deal with the previous one so just walk a bit you should get a new spawn they're actually not spawning as they should what is happening there we are there we are by the tree so there we go there's another family over here there's another group of them over here by this wall and a lot of the other spawns i noticed with grass in area zero seem to have not shown up as much here's another group of them and it's all the third evolution so you'll probably just bump into them or just straight up bump into go goats that's all you're gonna really see at the area one section and yeah then you reach the section where the brute bonnet spawn and you just keep going back until you can get your jump bluffs but that's only if you want to hunt jump bluff because there's just so many other things to hunt in this game so if you are playing pokemon scarlet brute bonnet is also a grass type it's your past amoongus form and there's two pretty good spots to hunt it one is research lab two you can right come out of that there's this hill here that you can go up and down pretty much despawning a bunch of them in respawning them out and uh i mean despawning them out and respawning them in and you can just see them disappear on the map just like that and then you can go ahead and go down and you can also see these go goats have also invaded the, the area zero they're just they're just everywhere in this video the second spot that is a good place to hunt these brute bonnets are also going to be all the way down in research area four so from research lab station four what you want to do is pretty much follow this pathway to the right this is the typical path that people are currently running in order to get things to spawn this is what you do for pretty much any paradox in fact the iron valiant that i have is from this pathway with the fairy sandwich so you should definitely check out that video after this one if you want to know how to do that if you're playing pokemon violet anyway once you get to this spot this is where i jumped down and slammed into you're going to be able to repeat and loop this pathway over and over again don't go too fast you might miss a spawn because you see those delayed ones and jump down and once you reach the jump down point over here you're just going to make your way back to the laboratory again and you can constantly keep repeating this loop until you get your brute bonnet with a blue hat and that's pretty much what a lap is considered now there is another very spicy area that you could test this out on let me show you it's pretty much where the jump point was on the map okay so from this jump point you're gonna drop down here just like this and you're gonna walk forward towards these crystals here you just ignore these brute bonnets maybe hopefully we don't get a shiny here as we're heading there and we're gonna keep going Keep going, keep going. And you're going to see a really weird rock formation towards that spot right over there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump towards it. And when you reach this weird rock location, you should get a disgusting amount of fruit bonnets on this rock. You can see how many are spawning on here. If you want to get rid of them, you just, it's so simple. You just fly off like this. Look how fast these guys despawn. You come back to the rock again, a whole new group of them spawn, and it's it's a lot. This rock has a good amount, so if you don't want to really run around the entire map, these rock formations are really good at doing that. Come back to the crystal again. They all despawn. You come back again, and they respawn. So this is a pretty cool new spot. You can actually do this for almost every Paradox Mon that you're getting to spawn here. Look how many spawn here. Look at that. It's a good amount. So 
you're spawning in a good group like 10 to 15 every single time you turn around that's going to increase your chances like quite a bit and you won't really have to miss it so use this spot if you want to do that instead of lapping around so now you know where to hunt all the grass pokemon but do you know where to hunt these pokemon click on this seriously you, you probably want to watch this 